here. Thank you for this group that's gathered. And I know this was kind of last minute Sunday. I said, hey, we're going to go ahead and have Wednesday night. But uh, I just couldn't stand not being together anymore and uh, studying the Word. So we thank you for, for coming. And those that are out there, we are, we are back on Wednesday nights at 6 o'clock and uh, pass the Word that we'll be here. And we can also watch live stream anytime during the week. But come on uh, during Wednesday night. And then we were talking about that Sunday. You can watch the, uh, the replay later in the week. Uh, but you can watch that anytime, but we would love to have you here in the fellowship and just studying God's Word together. Uh, we, are, we are grateful to be back together. Uh, let's look at some announcements. Now, this is just kind of a, a brief uh, a summary of what we're going to be looking at this fall, and we are going to try our best to uh, get everything back going. Now, we are asking you to pray for our daycare. We had to close down today. Uh, because we've had about four or five of our workers has had this latest strand of COVID. And then Gina got sick this afternoon, and she's over in NEA uh, getting some fluids. So please be praying for our daycare situation. And uh, I think they got enough to cover tomorrow, come back tomorrow on Friday. Uh, but there are, it's not, you don't have to stay quarantined as long as just five days. But we're hoping this doesn't break out and there's a good chance that once everybody gets back together for school, we may see this kind of spread through the school. It, it doesn't seem to be, to me, as it's more of a sinusitis type thing, but they're calling it COVID. And so anyway, um, I pray that just gets taken care of real quick, but uh, be praying for those. And pl please pray for Regina. She is she just not feeling well. Um, this, this COVID and the battle of COVID she had last summer just really took a lot out of her and her body. So uh, please give her uh, your prayers and our, our daycare workers. They, they work so hard, and so please be praying for them. Uh, Wednesday night studies back, so we look at our announcement, 6 o'clock. We're, we're going to meet soon with some of our, our people on GPS. We've got some coming, some going, and we've got a lot of young, young uh, ladies that want to help us with that, and we're excited about that. Uh, and so we're looking how we can kind of tweak that a little bit and uh, get, get the most out of that hour with the kids. Somewhere down the line, uh, hopefully here in September 7th, we'll, we'll be moving our, our prayer meeting back over to the sanctuary. And that's been a while, it's been a couple years. And so be praying for that as we have some come forward and, and pray that more will come and, and commit that semester. It'll just be about from September 7th to November the 3rd. Uh, and so, you know, about eight weeks maybe a little bit more, 12 weeks at the moment. I don't think it'd be 12 weeks, so pray for that. Um, also, uh, our Sunday School Step Up Day is going to be August 7th, so we'll go ahead and step up the kids that they are going to be going into the, their new grade that next that, uh, week after that, and so we're going to go ahead and move them in their new classes, let them get used to that before uh, school starts, so looking forward to how that goes. And also, I talked to uh, Amy today, and she's talking to others. And uh, we're going to start our men and women's Bible study August 14th uh, on a Sunday night at 5 o'clock. And so uh, be praying about that. Men, I, I think I know where we're going. We're going to be looking at thriving in Babylon. Uh, it's a study about how we, how we move on, how we keep telling the story of Jesus in a time that's uh, it's very difficult. And so we're looking forward to that. We'll be meeting over there, men, at the chapel and the ladies will be meeting in here. Uh, or we'll meet back here in the room where we did before, however, the, whatever's the easiest. And uh, so be praying for that. And we'll, we'll, we'll be starting that on August the 14th on a Sunday. And then we'll just, we won't have any Sunday night until August 14th. We'll go with that about six weeks. And then we'll have a few just Sunday night services, you know, kind of our Sunday night live. And then we'll be, the big news this week is the Christmas tree is returning this year for the first time in, in two years. And so Dan made that big announcement and there was lots of, positives about that people are really excited to see that coming back and so uh brush up on your acting abilities there'll be a, a, a acting call here soon and so we'll be looking for the best actors and, <laughs> and so uh rick rick is ready he's ready do you do a chicago italian accent by any chance <laughs> so we were talking about that this week and got a great story they're looking at um and so excited about that and uh We'll have trunk or treat and we'll have harvest Sunday and all that. But this is just some things to be praying about, some things to look forward to. And the big thing is, guys, our job now is to try to get everybody back to church. And uh, let's, let's get these numbers going. I love that quote Sunday that 
Jesus didn't leave behind a cowering church. He left behind a victorious, you know, powerful church. And that's where we need to be. There's a lot of people looking for answers these days. They need to know what's going on and what's happening, what's coming. And this, this, this book right here, the Bible, tells us what's, what's going to happen. And so what they need to do to be ready. And that's what we need to do as a church. Um, as we look at our prayer list, I didn't make a new one tonight because I've not been with you in so long. I was going to jot down some names. I do have some you can add to your prayer list that you have. And then on Sunday, I will have you a brand new prayer list uh, with, with everybody on it. Um, let me tell you what I know uh, up at the top, of course, people needing Jesus, uh, people fighting addictions. That's a still a, a real thing all over the country. Uh, Stepping Stones and Regina's Health, we've talked about that, and the health of our other workers, hurting people, broken homes, parents as they, as they parent through this time in history. Uh, every parent generation has had some things to overcome, and, and uh, we're, we're dealing with that uh, as parents. And, and so be praying for our parents and, and pray for the children. Pray for the, the kids in the home and, and how they, they handle things because there's, there's, we get that big generation gap sometimes, and and uh, with, with these girls having this old daddy like me, it's, it's a big generation gap. So we're trying to figure out how to, how to do this. And so be praying for our parents. We always want to lift up the unborn babies, foster care, adoption. Uh, and we haven't really got, got to be together and talk a lot about uh, Roe versus Wade being struck down. And uh, I think that is a glorious thing that, that uh, the babies will be protected. Uh, and that's something we've been praying for a long time, so we give God praise for that, for the, the lives of those individuals. Um, I know there's still many issues to, to go through on that, uh, but we believe that that, that baby is, is a person, is a baby at conception, and uh, it should be treated as such. And so be praying for that situation as it uh, evolves. Um, as we get down to the physical request, we continue to pray for Lauren Tacker, as I said earlier, Kim Mapes, as I said Sunday, Kim Mapes is in hospice now. Uh, she said it's, it's spread to just about all of her ab abdomen area. Um, and it's just been a battle now for two, three years, I guess, since we we prayed for her. She had a time of where it was in remission. Uh, but sadly, as cancer does, when it comes back, it seems to come back with a vengeance a lot of times. And so be praying for her and Terry. Uh, her family was all in this past weekend. And it, she said it made me tired, but it was so good to see everybody. So be praying for them. Uh, Coach Graham missed June. Coach has been doing a little bit better. He's been out a little bit more. That's excited me to see him out and about. Miss Graham's continuing to, to be there with him and to help him. Pray for her strength, and uh, we love her. Love them both, as, as well as Eddie and Linda. Linda's felt a lot better lately to be, see her in church and things. Uh, they are looking at some paperwork and things, like I said, Sunday to look at giving her back surgery. The doctor that they're talking to believes it would, would help her a great deal. And so we're praying that everything else will fit into place and that that will be able to be done here in the next month or so. Um, Junie Smith, that's JS's dad. We continue to pray for him. As you know, that he had a knee replaced. It's been infected. They had to remove all that. They've got some things in there just to kind of keep that cavity open and healing. He's not able to do a whole lot. I wouldn't think and uh, they're trying to once all that heals then they'll have to go back and give him another new knee and so be praying for Junie and Darlene and all of them as they go through this time Steve Shimpert as I said Sunday uh, may not have to have bicep surgery um, but he he says I'm just watching it he said at this point David and Judy uh, Lonnie Weldon on her back Miss Mobley uh, please continue to pray for her Has anybody talk to her in the last couple weeks? Anybody at all? Let's continue to make sure that we give her a call if you can reach her. She likes to be outside, but uh, continue to make contact with her with me and uh, let's let her know that we're thinking about her. Uh, Debbie Girdley, uh, her liver is treatable, but there's some things that they want her to do. So just pray for strength and courage to do those things. And we pray that it will be uh, something that will, will be healed. Uh, Miss Mildred is home. Um, and she is just kind of holding her own, I would say, right now. Just kind of holding her own. Um, just be praying for her. Pray for Linda and the family, brothers and sisters, as they help. Most of that falls with Linda a lot of times, so be praying for strength for her. 
Karen's uh, mom, we continue to pray for her as she's getting, uh, getting more and more stronger. Stephanie Ezekiel had her checkup and things look to be going well on her elbow surgery. Uh, Mark Harden uh, doesn't look like he had to be picked up last week. Uh, Aaron checked with him and he texted me after church and said, I'm doing better. He said, this hip thing is a real deal, right? replacing your hip. And I said, yep. And uh, he said, I said, just, you got to give it some time. You just got to give it some time. Uh, Lewis Buck Gibbs, uh, continue to pray for him. J.S., hear anything from him this week? Okay. Improving, but it, they said it's going to be a, a, a slow go. And, but God could touch him and, you know, could bring him back. There is a, a, a real defect on the right side, I believe, all the way down, and walking and speaking and moving body parts and things. So be praying for him. Lauren Schimper got good, good results. Uh, she had a nodule on her thyroid, and it was benign. So uh, Kirsty was really worried about that. We were praying for that, and so that's very good news. On the other side of that, um, you look there at the bottom, Felicia Pierce also had the same thing, but hers was cancerous. So please remember Felicia Pierce. Many of you know her. They visited here many times. And so she asked to be put on our prayer list, and please be praying for Miss Felicia. Going back up, the good news, uh, back to good news, uh, Morgan and Wesley, uh, Marley arrived at nine pounds and six ounces. This was their biggest baby, they said, of all three. She has a little bit of oxygen problem, breathing problem. They've had her on the oxygen since she was born, and they begin, they're continuing to lower that and wean her off. And so we hope that soon, Wesley said as of yesterday, they were still putting a little bit of oxygen on her, and uh, they should be hopefully coming home soon uh, if everything will clear up. And so uh, thanking the Lord for that newborn, and Gary will have a bigger smile on his face Sunday, I guarantee you, as that new baby has arrived. Also, Miss Joanne Tibbs that comes with uh, Mary Bell, uh, been coming for a good while. She's part of us now. Uh, her daughter-in-law, Renee Parker, is going through the exact same thing as Junie. She had knee surgery in 2020, and for those whole two years, it's been infected. And so they've went in there and removed everything and put some things in place to hold it open, but it's exact the same story as, as Junie is. So uh, be praying for her. They're looking to having a surgery, I think, on August 12th. To, to take that knee out and clean it up and uh, go from there. So I'll be praying for Renee. I mentioned Regina and uh, also uh, any others here. How's James doing, Fred? Okay. Just day. Okay, okay. We've been praying for Willie Stallings uh, and Nick Blackman. I was told a few weeks back that his cancer returned, so we'll be praying for them. Uh, Miss Nola, be praying for Miss Nola Fincher. We've been missing her, and the ladies have been ministering to her, and I appreciate that very much. Um, just looking through here, see if anybody else we need to think about. Uh, Taylor and Kobe Brister up next in the fall with their baby boy, and then Christmas will be Hannah and Ryan's turn. Uh, as we continue to on the baby watch. It's always good to see, always have babies coming on our prayer list because that's a good, good sign. Um, and then remember our nursing home folks and our, our military people. Now, who do you have? That, Fred, did you have any Sunday or anybody would like to add somebody? Are we good? Oh, I meant to put her on here. I'm sorry, Dan. Carson went today, had a, um, while she was on trip uh, up to the Great White North, they were, uh, she threw her knee out of place. You know, she had a surgery to tighten up that joint and it popped back in place and there's not been a lot of pain, but they said when they did the surgery, it was not, wasn't supposed to come out of place anymore. And so they're looking to see if something's come unattached, right? And so they're looking at MRI, okay. Okay, they're waiting on those results to see what that MRI showed up. So right now, God, thank God that she's not a lot of pain with it, but we don't want that to get all ripped up again after it's been worked on surgically. So be praying for Carson. Anyone else? Okay.
Ellie Robertson. A lot of you know that family from school, and she leads the cheerleaders and everything. So be praying for her mom. Good to see Miranda here tonight visiting with us. Miranda, you got anybody that needs prayers? Okay. Okay, all right. Her, her, her grandpa was pastor at Etiwall, is it, uh, Assemb huh? Yeah, PCG, and uh, where Brother Huey was uh, before his passing. And he's been so sick, they had to cancel their service tonight, so she got to visit with us. And uh, please be praying for her grandpa as pastor, as her grandpa, and, and all those things. It's, it's, uh, and we pray that he'll be feeling better soon. What's his, what's his name? Thank you. Let's be praying for our schools, our teachers, as that's out there. Uh, I know they don't want to think about it. They want us to shut up, but uh, it's coming. By the way, we will have uh, a prayer walk on the August 14th. That'll be uh, at 630, so that won't interfere with our starting of our men and women's Bible studies, and we'll, we'll, we'll do that at 630 this year. And uh, they've got a lot to get done at school, so be praying for that, that to go smooth as they try to put all the ceilings back in before school starts. So, praying for that. What do you say, Mr. Smith? Got any prayer request? All right, we talked about him, man. All right, let's, take, let's go to prayer. Lord, it's so good to be back in your house. It's good to be back with our, our team here, our members, our, our, our prayers, and many more prayers out there, Lord. And we just uh, lift up this prayer list to you tonight. It's good to have this special time on Wednesday night just to lift up our prayer request. And Lord, we, we pray that you would be with everyone that we have mentioned. Uh, Lord, as we talked about Sunday, we want to talk about praying for each other spiritually. Uh, Lord, we want to pray that we will get rid of the things that cause us to not be filled with the Spirit. And we want to get closer to you. We want to be more obedient to you on a daily basis as a church, as individuals, as Christians. Uh, Lord, help us to to just look out to this world. This, this world is looking for some answers. We, we all kind of have been kind of told a lie that nobody really wants to hear the message anymore, but I believe, Lord, there's a lot of people that want to hear. They just want to hear the truth. And so we pray that we would be truth seekers and, and uh, seekers of the lost, seekers that have questions. And Lord, not to be quick to jump to judgment, but quick to jump to finding answers with them and, and uh, helping them grow and find their way in, in many different things. Lord, we, we just ask you to bless this time together. Help us to study your word, Lord, and thank you for the Holy Spirit. And uh, thank you for all that you do for us, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. I want to continue on with the Holy Spirit as we started Sunday. And this is just, we're just going to kind of dig into this from from. Sunday morning to Wednesday night for just a few more weeks. It won't be long, but there are so many parts of the Holy Spirit. And what I love about it, when you start digging deeper, it will take you down a great path to other things that are Bible truths that people want to know. And so our, our title for the next few weeks is just knowing the, the Holy Spirit deeper. Um, we talked about Sunday there. The Holy Spirit is the third person in the Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Uh, we know that he indwells the believers at salvation. Uh, we, we, we talked about that. And what I want to focus on tonight is our bodies are the Spirit's temple, but also this dwelling is, is permanent. Uh, we know that when he indwells us, that is for life. Um, and we'll look at that, and we're going to look at John 3 and different things, some things that Fred mentioned today in his, his lesson. Now, we talked about the different Sunday between being indwelt with the Holy Spirit. We believe that comes when we're saved. And then we, we have times where we have a filling of the Spirit, which should be on a daily basis. We want to get rid of junk and sin and, and repent and do those things where we, are, where we can be most obedient to what Christ has asked us to do. And we do that through the power of the Holy Spirit. And so it's such an amazing big part of our, our walk because the Holy Spirit is in us and dwells in us and it moves us, guides us, comforts us from day to day. And it's so important that we, I've been praying that every day, Lord, 
help fill me more with your spirit. Help me be more like you. Make me less me and make me more like you. And I think that should be every Christian's prayers. Lord, make me more like you. I want people to see Jesus when they see me. Not, not Todd, but Jesus. And that's, that's not easy. That's a, that's a good thing to say. And everybody says, yeah, amen. But it's a difficult thing because we have a, a bent to, to go opposite from God. Even when he's with us, we still battle. Paul talked about that battle. He said, man, we just fight every day with ourselves, And the things we don't want to do, we seem to do. And the things we want to do, we, we don't do for the Lord. And he said, I just, I just hate it. I wish I wasn't this way. And I think we could all agree to that. I wish, I wish we didn't have to fight sin on a daily basis. And uh, someday that fight will be over. And so looking forward to, to that. So let's dig in here. First of all, verse, verse. And we're going to be all over the place on verses. And so, man, hold your Bible tight. I've got some verses up here, some... Some will just dig out. And, uh, you know, it is Bible study, so I said, it won't hurt us to flip the pages. You know, I don't have to have everything up here, so, so there's a lot that we're going to dig through. We'll just get digging, and if we get, get uh, tired or if we run out of time, we'll, we'll dig again next week on the same thing. But um, I want to look at 1 Corinthians first, especially talking about this temples of God. Temple, our, our, our bodies are the temple or the, the indwelling of, uh, dwelling place of the Spirit. Think about that just a minute. How, how do you take care of your body? How do you take care of your body? Um, I've not too, done too good over that, with that over the last 15 years with gaining weight and, and doing those kind of things. And, and a lot of times, uh, it may not even be a bad thing, but we tend to replace something for something else, like with food or whatever. And I battle that. Other people battle other things. And we all battle something. We all got something that we battle. And so, you know, for me, if I don't take care of my body, I'm not going to be able to, to do things later in life that I would like to do. And so it's really hitting me now since I've crossed that 60 threshold that, look, it's getting a little different now, all right? It's a little different than it was. And, of course, some of you 70s and 80s folks tell me, well, just wait, wait 10 more years. I said, I, I'm not doing good with where I'm at now, so I don't know about then, but... But we, we, we think about those things that, that the Spirit lives in us. How do, we, how, do we, how do we treat this place where the Spirit lives? And whatever that, whatever that is that you battle, uh, you know, how, do we, how, do we, how do we battle that? 1 Corinthians 6, 19, 20 says, Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you? Look at that. There's the indwelling of this. He's in you, whom you have received from God. You are not your own. Boy, we live in a culture right now, guys, that says, hey, it's your life, make yourself happy. It's up to you. You do whatever you think you need to do. Guys, this is not ours if we know Christ. If we know Christ, this is not ours. This belongs to Christ. Every, every square inch of us belongs to Christ. It says, you were bought at a price, therefore honor God with your bodies. Now, what does that mean to you when, you when you hear that verse? Let's talk a little bit. Talk up loud, too, so people can hear you on the, on the live stream. But you were bought at a price, therefore honor God with your bodies. What does that mean to you? Therefore honor God with your bodies. What do you think about when you hear that? Yeah, yeah. And that's part of it too, yeah. Yeah, it's more than just physical intake. It's what goes through our eyes, what we hear through our ears. Uh, it, all that affects this temple. Yeah, and then, then how you digest that and what comes out. You know, the old saying is garbage in, garbage out. If we're putting God in, we hope we, that God should come out. And so the more of Jesus we put into ourselves through the power of the Holy Spirit, the more Jesus is going to come out. It just, it makes sense. Whatever you're doing the most of, that's what's going to be on your mind. And it's more than just physical intake. To me, that come to my mind first, but that is so true. It's spiritual intake. And that's a lot of times more detrimental than what we're taking in physically because that moves us away from the Lord. I, I can eat a hamburger, and that doesn't hopefully don't move me away from the Lord, but I can take something in through the eyes, through what I hear, what I say, and that can move me away from God as far as 
sin. Sin separates us from God. Not that he leaves us, but we move further away where that repentance has to be asked. Lord, will you forgive me of those sins that I've committed and, and make me and bring me closer back to you? And that's where we long to be, is right where Jesus is. Because we can hear him the best when we're the closest to him. We can hear him the best when we're closest to him. When we're out wandering in the prodigal son land, we may not hear him good. We might not hear him as well as when we, our sins are forgiven, we've repented of our sins, we're trying to keep junk out of our lives, however that be, either physical intake or spiritual intake, and we're trying to be as close to Christ as we can. Someone else, what does it mean when it says, therefore honor God with your bodies? Any other ideas? Right. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, it's not only that he's there all the time, amen, he's there all the time. And so where are we taking him? You ever think about that? Where am I taking the Holy Spirit? You know, where, where did I drive him to today? Where did I drive him to this weekend? Where, what's that? What song did I sing today? Yeah, how, how did that impact? And, and going back to what Rick said, how did that glorify God? Or did it at all? Did it at all? Uh, we have to think about those things, and we forget that real easy. We don't, we don't get up saying, okay, when I walk out this door this morning, the Holy Spirit's going with me. You know, we don't just set him up on the shelf out here in the church lobby and say, I'll see you next week, Spirit. He walks right out that door with you if you're a Christian, if you're truly his, and only you and God know that. If you're truly his, though, he's that seal God gave you, and he's going with you, and he's going to guide you if you'll let him. If you'll let him, we can quench the Holy Spirit. We can, we can grieve the Holy Spirit. And that's something we do, and we need to ask for forgiveness for that. Uh, and we, we become rebellious sometimes. But we have to remember, and we'll get into this a little bit later, because um, some ask if you can lose the Holy Spirit. You know, when you look in that, if God gave you something and sealed it, how can you remove something that God sealed? How can you remove God's seal in your life? Now, the big question is, do I truly know him as my Savior? And listen, only you and him know that. Now, there's going to be fruit. There should be good fruit, you know, that we have. And we don't have no problem going out and say, somebody says, go find me an orange tree. If we got at Florida, we were driving through there, and I seen orange trees over there. I said, look, look at the oranges on there. That's something strange for us. Up here, we might see apple trees. But we don't have no trouble saying, hey, that's an apple tree because it's got apples on it. That's the same way with us as Christians. When people see us, say, that guy right there, that lady right there is a Christian because there's Jesus in them. They're speaking the word. They're talking about the word. And that's it's not to a point where, you know, hey, sit down a minute, let's read the Bible together. And that's a, there's a time for that. But just living the life. Just living the life. Hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's right. You're doing godly things. Yeah. Yeah. We're doing godly things. And people say, well, you know, I know I'm supposed to do better and represent Christ. But no, you're, 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 you're supposed to be out doing godly things. You know, whether it's loving a neighbor, spreading the good news and sharing the gospel with them, praying for them. You know, whatever that entails, it should glorify God, but it should also show them, look, the fruit they produce is, is God fruit. It's God fruit. And I think that's very important. Anyone else? Yeah, isn't it something? Yeah, he's not, he's not moving out. He's moving in. And... Well, I think we take him to a lot of places. We don't even think twice sometimes about where we're, we're going and why we're there, you know, what we say. You know, we may go to a, a ball game. How do we act while we're there? You know, do we lose our mind when the play don't go our way? I've seen it happen a lot. Used to be I was one of them, you know, when I got old and realized I can't do anything to make this game go any different, you know. We can yell at those guys in striped shirts all day. They ain't going to change one play because I yelled my, my voice away, you know. We used to yell so hard that I'd have, I couldn't hardly talk on Sunday to sing back when I was song leader in the softball fields. And I said, there's a problem here. There's a problem here. 
And so that competitive nature, if you've got a bad competitive nature, it, it sticks with you a long time, and it is hard to, hard to overcome, hard to overcome. All right, let's move on and kind of get into that, can we lose the Holy Spirit? And it goes with security of the believer, and we'll talk about that some more here in a minute. But the Old Testament, we talked about this Sunday. Some of this we're going to hit from Sunday, but just real briefly, if you've got questions about what you heard Sunday, don't, don't be afraid to say, hey, tell me more about this. The Old Testament relates occasions where the Holy Spirit left someone, okay? And so we talked about Saul, and we see that in 1 Samuel 16, 14. We talked about, I don't know if I mentioned Samson or not, but, but Samson, you know, remember he said the Spirit had left and he did not know it when she cut his hair, when Delilah cut his hair. He said the Spirit was gone, he did not know it. And it says many times in the Old Testament, but also I looked this up because I thought I'd, I remembered the scripture. Even when Mary was asked to be, you know, that she would be the, the mother of Jesus, it used this terminology, he, the Spirit came upon her. And we see that in the Old Testament where it came upon uh, different, uh, ju in Judges, in First Chronicles, in the prophets like Ezekiel, the Spirit led them to speak truth, the leaders of Israel, and also it says inspired the Scripture. So all these things, uh, it, it says that mainly in the Old Testament that the Spirit came upon them. Now, the Spirit would move in the Old Testament, then it would move over here, and it, you know, it, was, it was different. But when Jesus died, was buried and rose again, and then the Pentecost, the day of Pentecost happened, which we hit in Acts 2 Sunday, um, it, it brought a whole, whole new way because when that spirit fell that day, it fell on each person. And that was the time when it began to indwell each individual. Um, and so it's kind of like what we talked about earlier. When God steals you with the Holy Spirit, he's not going to take that away, okay? And we might be rebellious sometime, but man, I guess, you know, our kid, well, I better not say that. Some other people's kids get rebellious sometimes, okay? But they don't quit being your kids, Okay. And so when we're rebellious toward God sometimes because of our sinful nature, he doesn't get rid of us. We are still sealed with the Holy Spirit. And so, can we lose it? Uh, Jesus made a promise, prom, a promise of permanency. I don't know if that's a, a good word or not, but I come up with that today. I hope I spelt my made-up word all right. But he, he made a promise of permanency. Look at, look at John 14, 16 and 17 as we kind of continue on this losing the Holy Spirit. He says, and we read these verses Sunday. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate. Or what was that word we used Sunday? Starts with a P? Paraclete, all right? He, one that summons to your side. One that summons to your side. He says, to advocate, to help you and be with you, how long? Forever. To be with you forever. The spirit of truth, that's the Holy Spirit. The world cannot accept him because it ne neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. Now, that is so important in the process of salvation. Well, let me just hold back on that, because we're going to get that with, John, with Nicodemus. And I just want to talk to you all at one time, but my, my words won't flow out that fast. As we moved on to, to Pentecost, we just talked about what happened that day when the Spirit fell and indwelled. Of course, if, if you read on after Sunday, you know Peter got up and gave one of the greatest messages ever and 3,000 souls were added to the church and he just wanted the people to know what God was doing and it says uh, a writer I was reading said it, that that day of Pentecost especially those disciples and the others there that would grow as the church grew it says it gave them courage to face opposition we know they were going to do that we know they were going through persecution how did all the disciples die they all died a martyr's death except one, John. All the others died a martyr's death. And guys, you remember when they would cower in places before the Holy Spirit fell? And they would be in the upper room or they would be hiding. Or You remember Peter? Peter denied Christ three times. And just hours before that, he said, Man, Lord, everybody will leave you, but I will be right there. I'm not going anywhere. And the first time he got a chance, he got afraid. He said, This could... When, when it co could cost us something of ours, and let's just remove the part of our life, but when it cost us something to sacrifice for Jesus, we start scratching our head and start coming up with excuses why we can't do that. Amen? Or oh me. We, we have to realize, guys, that this is, a, 
this is a 24-hour commitment for the rest of our life. We, we get really excited sometimes about serving the Lord and doing things in the church, but we're excited for four months. And then we're going, whew, this is a lot of work. Guys, listen, we, we were talking about this a little bit with some folks before church, but we, we are at a point where we need younger people and people start stepping up. we got too many people doing too many things on their own or with God, but they're, they're doing this and this and this and this and this. Listen, we have a church big enough and we have enough talented people that we need people to step up and take some of these places from some of these folks that's got 10 things to do during the week. And every service they're here, they're, they're not in here because they've got another obligation. But here's the thing, guys. It's going to take faithfulness and it's going to take commitment for the long haul. Not just for six weeks, not just for a year, not just till I get tired. Because I know there's some in here that are tired. Because every time a job comes open, nobody steps up. And you know, what do they do? I'll do it. I'll do it. They would rather do it than let it not go undone. And we have to, we have so many young people coming in. We have got to put people to work. And so I'm really going to be pleading for that this, this fall. And, and pleading that people want to come in and, and, and get involved with these kids. And come in and get involved and and sign up for the nursery but be here when it's your turn you know don't don't go right off saying can somebody cover for me when you sign up that means i'm going to be there and so i know that's kind of preachy tonight but and i know i'm probably preaching to some that already do 100 things but but guys that's the next big step i see our church having to take is be filled with the spirit and and then commit commit for the rest of your life because this is not something when you're saved that you just enjoy and bathe in and then go do what you want and then come and bathe in it again. This was never meant to be a spectator sport. This was mean, this is a sport that you get involved. You're on the playing field because you're on God's team. And I, I know some are a little bit older than others and they can't do the physical things they used to do. But God is sending us some very talented people. And, and it's part my fault, it's part just putting them in the right places, but we have to be faithful. And so as, as we look at this and we see that we can be filled with the Spirit and give them courage in the face of opposition, it gave them love for all, all humanity. As the Spirit grows in us, as the love for others grows for us, we're going to be more committed to do what we need to do. And we've got to get our attention off ourselves, and we've got to get it on others. Because we, we spend a lot of time going, well, is that going to interfere with my schedule? We look at our schedule and we check off all the places we can't serve God. Rather than saying, I need to serve God on these days and I'm going to set these things to the side. We never sacrifice for God if we're not careful. And I know I'm just talking about duties at the church, but in all of our life, if there's something we've got planned... That's going to happen first. And very seldom are we going to say, no, no, no. That's something going on at the church. I'm going to set that to the side, and I'm going to go there and do what I need to do. At least be there and be faithful. If it's just a service, if it's just me preaching, if it's whatever it is. But I see that, guys, and I, I, I really feel, and I'm kind of chasing a rabbit here, but hang with me. We'll come back. But I really feel that God needs us to step up as a church. And, and we have so many talented people that we can't get involved, mainly because we haven't been here. But through Bible school, I've seen people, I've seen people come to me and say, I'm ready to get busy. I'm ready to do something. I want to be a part. And now what I've got to do and what we've got to do as councils and, and leaders is we've got to find these people places to go to work. And we've got to get busy. And we've got to turn our calendar around and say, Let's give God some days. I don't like this mentality in the church today, and I'm not just talking about our church, but across America, the mentality is, if I have nothing else to do, I'll be at church. And it's probably been that way for a long time. But we've been scared away by sickness and all that. I understand that. We worked ourselves through that as best we could. And there's still the devil trying to scare people with that and everything else. But when we look at this, Giving the power to face and face the opposition. 
it gave them love for all humanity. It gave them supernatural abilities to further the gospel. You go, well, I don't have any. Now, in, in the disciples, they did some supernatural things. They did some, some miracles because the church was new and God was proving what this salvation was about and showing the people what this salvation was about because everybody doubted it except just a handful at first. But the disciples went out with superpowers, supernatural powers, only from God, only from the Spirit. And when we step up for the Lord, he's going to give us the power to do what we need to do. He's going to give us the, the information. He's going to give us the talent to do what we need to do. God's never going to call you to do something and not equip you for it. He's just not. You're talking to a boy that used to sell paint here. I know. I know what he can do, all right? It just wasn't supposed to happen, me being a preacher. But when the Holy Spirit gets a hold of you, he'll change your life. He'll change your life. So I'm not here to yell at you. I just want us to be, I want us to be, be fired up for the Lord. And I want us to start giving him more time. Because we've gotten used to, and you know, because of sickness, we've canceled services this summer. It's been a busy summer. We canceled services here and there. And guys, we, we need to get back where we can't wait when these doors are open to get in this place. And if even it's only, you know, we're just talking about Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. And I hope that will branch out into other things. Maybe, maybe Wednesday nights is a bad night for you as far as everything. But I hope we can develop other things during the week that that might be a better night for you. Maybe Tuesday night's better for you for a Bible study. Maybe Thursday night's a better night for you. Maybe going out to eat on a weekend is a better night for you to, to talk over with, with your friends about the Lord. Um, but guys, listen, we have the Holy Spirit, and we have a permanency here. We know him as our Savior. We know the Holy Spirit is there indwelling us. We need to be fired up about that because that is a gift from God. That is a gift. And we cannot look at that and just snub it and keep on going. And I know we all have a busy schedule, but I keep asking myself and others, when's the last time you canceled something because church was going on? And boy, that... That'll make you feel bad about yourself right there a little bit. So that power of Pentecost, I know I said all that, but to know we, we can do this. We can do this. And God has brought us great people. One more thing, Hebrews 2, 4. How shall we escape if we ignore so great a salvation? This kind of flows right into that. What a gift. I just said, what a gift. Look at this verse. How shall we escape if we ignore so great a salvation? This salvation, which was first announced by the Lord, was confirmed to us by those who heard him. God also testi testified it to it by signs, wonders, and various miracles, and by the gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will. You know what I think? I think the more we want to do for Christ, the more the Holy Spirit will equip us with things to do for him. And we've seen it in our church through the years. Someone may be moving or someone may, you know, whatever. They, don't, they have to leave. We've had a lot, of, a lot of great couples move off to Jonesboro and different places, and we, we still miss them. But it seems like every time someone had to go, God, the Holy Spirit, replaced them with someone that had similar talents. And that's why I know he's, he's here. I know he wants to work through us. If he's in our lives, which he is, and we're Christians, we're saved, we're born again, and we know that he's equipping us to do things for him. But if we never use those things, you know, how can we escape and ignore such a great salvation? I just, I want us to be fired up about that. Salvation is impossible without the Holy Spirit. Salvation is impossible without the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 12, 13 says, For we are all baptized by one Spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we are all giving the one spirit to drink, to drink it in, to indwell, to, to bring it into our life, into this sanctuary, into this temple that we call our life. And we are to take that in. John 6, says, no one can come to me unless the father who sent me draws them and I will raise him up at the last day. The spirit of God, the Holy Spirit of God draws us to Christ. It draws us to Christ, that, that um, conviction power that calling power, that repent and come to me power. Let me take care of you power. Let me show you how to live both wonderfully someday in heaven, but also abundantly right now in this world. 
and we feel like we're defeated, I think. I think we've been through so much, and we, we hear so much garbage on the news and things now about, oh, I don't want nothing to do with God, and let's get him out of here and get him out of there and get him out of there. Guys, he hasn't left our heart. He hasn't left our bodies as, as Christians. And so, you know, we don't seem to have much of a voice in the national media, but you know what? We've got a voice in our churches. Our churches have a voice. We can be heard in these communities around us, but we've chose to stay silent. Afraid we're going to get in an argument with somebody. And we're not out there to argue. Guys, listen, we can argue politics and all that stuff all day long. And, and uh, I, one of the preachers said, man, I've, I've, I've talked to people about politics, and he said, I can't recall one person I've ever changed their ideas to my ways. We're just going to sit there and argue about it, you know? I don't feel like I need to preach about politics because... What we're interested in, guys, is that people come to know Christ as Savior. That's what we're interested in. That's what we've got to stay focused on. Because, yeah, the devil loves us to get us out here and get us arguing, arguing with different, different denominations and things. But, but listen, the, the keys of the word is Christ came, Christ died, Christ took our place on the cross, he, he, he was buried and rose again to show that he is alive and well and God accepted his payment of our debt that we couldn't pay. And now we are debt-free through Jesus Christ. And that's the key. That's what churches need to be preaching today. But we're trying to dip in all kind of other things. We need to be preaching the word because people can hear all other things on the internet and everywhere else. You sit and watch YouTube and watch what's going on down there and church-wise and the way they're answering questions and you're going, what in the world? People just want to hear the truth. They want to hear the truth. So... I pray for all of our churches. I, I pray for all of them. I pray that, that we will be convicted to, to not get so caught up in who's Republican and who's Democrat, because what that's going to cause is it's going to cause a split. It's going to cause your church to be on this side and that side. And, and I know some people love to hear about that and talk about it, but you've got a whole lot of time on your own to talk about that stuff if you want. But I just don't feel led to sit up here and preach about who the president is and who's not the president, who we need for the president, when people are dying and going to hell without Jesus Christ. Okay, so there's some people want to hear that, but I just, I don't see that as our main goal here as First Baptist Church, Kaiser, Arkansas. And in, in, the, in the spirit, I, I know I'm kind of drifting all over, but that's, that's the way I've been thinking lately. The Lord just, you know, he's just saying, look, look at, look at all this. You know, the church is changing. The church is changing after COVID and after all these things. And churches are shrinking and, and it just breaks our heart. How, how, can we, how can we get people interested in, and excited about Jesus again? Interested out there, excited in here. And he, said, he just read there, he said, how can we escape such a great salvation? We shouldn't have to be made interested or excited about God after what he's done for us. We shouldn't have to pull like pulling teeth. Libby said they had to get some cavities today, and she said, they were drilling my teeth, Daddy. Just drilling in my teeth like, like a, a, a chainsaw. We shouldn't have to go through pain in order to get excited about Jesus because just look in the mirror what he's done for you. And so uh, this, this Holy Spirit thing, guys, is, is big in this. The Holy Spirit is moving us, and it gives us power that we can be victorious. Any words, any thoughts? I know I'm rambling here. Yeah, yeah. 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 And it's it's all of us wanting to invite people to share with them and also what kind of fruit we're bearing and what we're what we're putting out. What's that? Yes, yes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Prayer, yes, sir. I think it's a, a big, a big gift that churches aren't using enough. Yeah. 
Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, he'll he'll let us go if we we want to head there, you know. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. There's a lot of grandmas and grandpas and moms and dads prayed for folks and prayed for kids and prayed for family. And, uh, you know, they've always said those will be the, the people celebrated in heaven someday is those that just pray. You know? And that's, the, that's, a, that's a power that we just don't tap into enough. And like I said, it, it's good to pray for the little things that we want in life. And that's, that's good to take, it says take all things to God. But I don't think we pray enough for God to change us. I just don't think we want to change, so we don't pray for it. It's kind of like when you pray for patience, you know. Are you pay, praying for patience? And God's usually going to give you something to make you more patient. And so uh, it's, it's, it's something to think about. But you're so right. You're so right. Uh, salvation is, is impossible without the Holy Spirit. John 3, Jesus said this to Nicodemus. we got about eight minutes. Verily, truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. We know the story here that Nicodemus was on the Sanhedrin court. We know that he, he came to Jesus by night. He, he had one, one flaw. Well, he, he, he was human, so he had flaws. But the one thing that really held Nicodemus back was he didn't want to be, he didn't, he didn't want to be that he was a believer. And so he had to, to do this. If you ever watch The Chosen, Nicodemus would always kind of be in the shadows, and he wanted one of the apostles to come over and talk to him or whatever. Of course, they, they added some, but, but you could kind of get an idea of what Nicodemus was like. And, and he wanted so much to, to just be out in the open. But after Christ died, and, and, and really before that, in, in the nights of the court of Jesus for his crucifixion, they're asking to call for treason and everything else. He, he's, he's saying things that is beginning to stand up for who he is and who he believes in, which is Jesus Christ. And then, where is he at when Jesus has been taken off the cross? He's right there at the cross. Guys, that was a big step for him because his buddies didn't want him down there at that cross, taking him off that, 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 that cross and helping bury him. He was trying to let them know, look, I'm going public with my faith. And that was, that was very difficult. So at this very early part, he come to Jesus by night. I don't know... If it was because his schedule was busy, but I believe a lot of it was he wanted answers, but he didn't want to be ridiculed because he was down there talking to that man from Galilee. And so he, but he, he truly wanted answers. He truly wanted to find out what was going on. And he come to Jesus, he said, what can I do? What can I do to guarantee that I will go to heaven? What good deed, what commandment can I keep? And Jesus just, he answered the question that people need to hear. There is nothing we can do to save ourselves. There is nothing we can do to save ourselves. People are trying to work their way to heaven every day. They're trying to be good enough. They're trying to give enough money. They're trying to help people, and that's all good. But none of that gets you into the doors. I was reading this today in one of my studies. It says, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Now, there's a lot of, con there's a lot of different ideas of what this water means. Um, I think if you go on down and it says you've got to be born of the flesh and born of the spirit. Some will say this water is the, the washing of the word. Um, it, to me, it, it looks like it's just being born of your mother, of water. And some will take that deeper. But you've got to be born physically and then you've got to be born spiritually. And that's the spirit. The Holy Spirit, you know, baptizes you into the family. Um, but it says... Unless one is born of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. If a nation passed a law that said no one could live there except those who were born in that nation, and someone wanted to live there and not was born there, 
It wouldn't matter if he took a name that was common to the nation. It wouldn't matter if he spoke the language. It wouldn't matter if he observed some customs. It wouldn't matter if he dressed like those in the nation. It wouldn't matter if he practiced some of the religious traditions of that nation. It wouldn't matter if his parents were born in that nation. It wouldn't matter if, children were, if his children were born there. And it wouldn't matter if he had many friends in that nation. All that would matter was if he was actually born there. What is, what is Jesus telling Nicodemus? Nicodemus, no matter what you do, you must be born again. You've got to be born into this family, into this nation, so to speak, into this kingdom. And no matter what you do to look like the kingdom, to act like the kingdom, to talk like the kingdom, unless you're born of the Spirit of God, you cannot gain eternal life. And there's a lot of people who need to hear that truth. You know, they're... They're, they just think there's all these roads to heaven. And, and I'm not talking about any denomination. But I, I'm talking about every, there's just one road. Everybody believes that. The Bible teaches that. I'm the way, the truth, and life. No man comes to the Father except by me. Folks want to tell you there's many roads up the hills. And there's just one way. And I've always told you I love that because I don't have to guess which is the right way. What if you pick this road over here and I pick this road and it don't get me to heaven, but your road does? Well, I thought I was doing right. I thought I had the right, right idea. Just go up one of them roads and get to the top of the hill. But there's only one way. And he said, Nicodemus, you can look like everybody. You can talk like them. You can do everything you want. But you are not part of this nation unless you're born again. And that's how evil we are. We can't come to him and just be a better version of ourselves. Christianity is not getting better. Well, when I do right, I'm going to come to church. You will never come to church because we always have mistakes. We always have sin. But Jesus said, look, there's only one way. It's through me, and you must be born again. There, the world needs to hear that. Now, a lot of them don't want to, but, but they've heard so much riffraff from our churches and all these crazy people out there in every denomination and we're right at the forefront a lot of times, you know. But I don't know, guys. I, these are just some thoughts that's been on my mind. I think with salvation, the Bible tells us clear that you, you profess Christ with your mouth and believe that he is God's son, you shall be saved. Believe it in your heart. You shall be saved. That's not complicated. But we sit back, and I see it, I see it in our denomination a lot preachers are people posting things if you're not doing this you're lost if you're not doing this you're lost if you're not doing this you're lost guys we have no say so in who's lost and who's saved now i believe we're going to produce good fruit don't get me wrong i believe you're going to see but when it comes right down to it only jesus knows and that person knows but we're in this this thing about where we're judging everybody's salvation why don't we just state the truth of what the Bible says and let God go to work with the Holy Spirit? Rather than saying, well, they're not doing things the way... We, for, for some reason, guys, we've got in our mind, each individual has in mind what a Christian should look like. And we've, we've kind of tweaked that by the way we grew up and what churches we grew up and were they legalistic, were they not, were they this, were they that. And we've got this in our mind that we can look, oh, they're lost. Oh, they're, what, they're lost, they're doing that, they're lost. Guys, we don't know. Only God knows. Well, you know, the Bible tells us in the New Testament that we can tell somebody they're saved by if they trust God, trust Jesus as God's son, believe that he died, believe that, you know, and repent. Repentance is a huge part as we repent of our sins that Jesus died for. And it says we, we have the authority to tell someone they're going, they're saved. They, they know Jesus. Because if they've done what the Bible said, we can tell them that. But what I get fired up about is we're telling everybody they're not saved. Yeah, that's what we ought to be praying for them. And, you know, people hear the judge not thing, and that's what the world's using now. Well, don't judge me. Don't judge me. Well, that's probably right. Because you know what? God's going to judge. He said, he said, let me worry about all that. I'll do the judging. I'll do the judging. You do the praying. You do the loving. You don't return evil for, for evil. You would turn evil for good. You love your neighbor as yourself. Y'all are starting a brand new section on that in Sunday school. You love your neighbor as yourself. You know? And so 
these things have just been, you know, I'm not getting clear visions from God or anything. I'm just saying he's stirring my heart to look at his word and, and, and what are we doing as we, we sit and look at people and we, we condemn them to hell. And we just need to know if we're ready or not. The Bible even says some people is not going to, they're just going to be saved as by fire. There's going to be people that just get there. You know what? They're going to be in heaven. I'd rather just get there than not get there. We, you know, every time someone's saved, they're just not going to break out and start preaching and everything else. But, but God is there, and we need to pray. We need to help them grow. We need to help them disciple. Rather than just saying, oh, you can't do that. No, oh, you can't do that. And Man, I will never... I, I, well, I just, I won't go there, but... But people, they get so fired up about God and their salvation, and then they go to work and people just start saying, oh, you did it wrong. Oh, you didn't do this. Oh, you didn't do that. Right. Everybody sins different, but we all sin. And because I'm, that don't bother me, well, they're terrible for doing that. You know, I don't have a, have a problem with alcohol. I don't, I don't want it. But somebody may. So what do we do? Well, you didn't really get God if you are still drinking. No, we pray for them. And listen to me, this, this growing in Christ is a lifelong thing. I didn't, mature, I didn't mature from two to five years old, and I was as old as I'd ever get and knew everything. You know what? I'm 60, and I still don't know everything. I feel like I know less about God's Word than I did when I started because there's, it's, just, it's just unfathomable what God has for us. It's just unfathomable. And we just try to pick at each other and pick at each other in denominations and pick at this. And Guys, we need to realize that we need to be victorious as God's church. Someday we're going to worship together up there. There's not going to be a Baptist section. There's not going to be this section, that section. You know what? We're going to come in one accord. Amen. We're going to go to the feet of Jesus. And we're going to praise his name. And I just, I just ask, we, God, give me clear eyes to see things. I've, I've been tarnished. I've been, I've been dirtied by life and by my own cynical things. And we live in a world that we have to be cynical all the time because somebody's scamming somebody every minute, you know? And we've just got so cynical. Why are we cynical about who's saved and who's not? Yes, we need to be loving them. We need to be praying for them if they find Christ. But I'm telling you, if they got evidence of the Holy Spirit in their life and they know that and they're being guided by the Holy Spirit, the Bible says they are gods. They are gods. Man, I could talk to y'all for another hour. But I just, these, these are thoughts that when we had that about the Spirit conversation in Louisiana and, and what you guys do it in Sunday school, I, I don't want to overdo that. I don't want you to feel like, oh, we're going through that again. I, I just... I just hope this, as me and Brother Fred talked about, I hope this will be a companion that you've studied some things and that we just look at things with clear eyes. And I, I'm praying that I do that. Because just like when we get out in the world and we get dirtied by sin, if we're not careful, we can get dirtied by our own views of how church are to be and how salvation are to be and how this are to be. Our view can get dirtied. And sometimes we need a good old washing of the word and a filling of the Holy Spirit and to make us realize that we need to be praying and loving people. That's all he ever asked us to do. He didn't ask us to save one person. He said, that's mine. That's my part. You just go and love them and pray for them. And uh, I don't know, guys, I've got so much that, that we're thinking about and doing and as far as life and all that and trying to figure out where my true beliefs are as far as about other things, not about the word. It's, it's solid, but there's just things that sometimes you kind of thought you didn't have in your heart, but you did, and you've got to weed those out. You've got to weed those out. I pray we will all do that. Don't get so caught up in how things are done or they got my seat or they don't sing the song I like, those kind of things, guys. Come in here and worship the Lord. Worship the Lord. If you hate that song, just pray all that time, okay? Just bow and pray. But, but praise the Lord. Worship Him. 
don't come here going, what time is this going to be over? Why is he still preaching? It's, it's 10 after 12. I've only had you for one hour. Man, I've got to get as much in as I can. But no, I'm, I'm joking there. But I just, man, I, I'm excited about what God's going to do if we'll get on board. If we'll get on board. And I'm talking to me on down. Because you have a tendency to lay in that comfort zone, you know. There ain't nothing nicer than after a busy day to stretch back out in that, that lazy boy, you know. And, and because of everything going on, we've got to refocus and, and, and get that, kind of like when you go get a new pair of glasses and everything looks a little crisper than it used to. We've got to do that through God's word and through prayer and through the Holy Spirit, okay? And we get deeper in him and we're going to be, look out, look out across the country, okay? This is not hopeless. We are not defeated. We win. The Bible guarantees us we win. I like to win. That's right, yeah. That's right, amen. We've, we've already been guaranteed the victory through Christ. Not through our greatness, but his greatness. And we'll just say amen on that, amen? All right. I told you I need to get back together with y'all. I've got, I'm fired up. And I appreciate the time down this summer. It, it really helped to get rested and, and get fired up going to be good. It's going to be good. I love y'all. Amy, would you dismiss us?